Hi, I'm Richard Tendick, and today we're going to talk about how to use the elliptical jig to create an elliptical tabletop. The plans on how to make this jig are found in the American Woodworker magazine. All right, the, the jig consists of basically three separate parts. There's the base made out of plywood, basically half inch and quarter inch plywood, and the sliders that are held inside two slots. The sliders are nothing more than a piece of plastic with a hole drilled and tapped in the middle to attach the arm. The arm consists of a series of holes so that you can create the size of the tabletop that you would want. The router is attached by means of screws through the, the uh, base and up to the arm, tightened down and ready to go. I have added an extra feature here with these little pins. What this does is that by pulling the pins out, loosening the screws, we can slide the router forward just a sixteenth of an inch to do a final cleanup on the, the routing. Now, what we've done so far is we have attached the base to the plywood that is going to be the tabletop by means of two screws. So that means that we are attaching the base to the plywood on the underside of your plywood. We have then, on your uh, elliptical table, you have a major diameter and a minor diameter. In this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be routing a tabletop that has a distance of 35 inches on the major and 23 inches on the minor. The way you do this is by taking the screws and placing them in the appropriate holes on the arm. They're clearly marked right here for 10, 20, 30, 25, so forth. And then you apply the screws through it. I use screws because I found that by using nails or pins of some type, the arm can pop off in the middle of routing, which can be bad. So by using a screw with a good head on it, you don't have that problem. So attaching the screw to the first slider, and then the screw to the second one. We're now ready to route. What I first did was I used the pencil neck, the base on it, and I drew a pencil mark that would show us exactly what the tabletop will look like after it's all done. Then I took it to a bandsaw, and I cut off to within about an eighth of an inch of that line. I'm now ready to go ahead and we're going to do a series of plunges. So I'm going to go down about a quarter of an inch and make one pass. Then I'm going to go down another quarter inch, make a second pass, and then finish it off on the last one. This will make sure that you don't have any stress on the router bit causing any uh, vibrations or routing. All right, we've now finished routing the uh, three passes. And because it's got some very slight rough edges where the three passes came together, what I'm going to do is show you the trim feature that we've uh, put onto this particular jig. We've got two pins here. These pins line up and keep the router in a particular location. 
One is going to be for your standard, and by pulling the pins out, sliding the base forward, and reinstalling the pins in the trim holes, we will now be able to route off approximately a sixteenth of an inch. Now, I pull the pins, release the wing nuts, and just as I'm making this adjustment, I have two lines here that by watching how I move those lines, I know which direction I'm moving everything. I now I have the lines moved in the direction I want. Place the pins in the trim hole. And then tighten up the wing nuts. At this point, all I need to do is turn the router on, plunge it, and I will take off approximately a sixteenth of an inch for the final cleanup of the uh, tabletop. Now, having finished the final pass, we take the jig off, and there we have our perfect elliptical tabletop.